Hello, everyone. I'm here with John Loomer today from John Loomer Digital. Uh, John is a Facebook marketing coach, author, speaker, and strategist. He became an early user of Facebook for business purposes while working for the National Basketball Association in 2007 and launched John Loomer Digital in late 2011 and in a little more than a year established JohnLoomer.com as well as his Facebook page as the go-to resource for Facebook marketing research guides and tutorials. Uh, JohnLoomer.com was recognized as one of Social Media Examiner's top 10 social media blogs for 2013, 2014, and 2015. It is simply the most complete online resource of advanced Facebook marketing tips and tutorials, and it's updated on nearly a daily basis. And today, we are going to talk with John about B2B marketing on Facebook. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Dave. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I uh, always love having you on for multiple reasons. One, to help educate everyone else out there, and two, for our personal use. Our, our team is always learning from you and uh, uh, through your uh, Power Hitters Club, and uh, we love talking with you. So I'm very excited to talk about this as uh, B2B marketing is obviously – a uh, different type of nut to crack than B to C, and uh, want to kind of dig in and, and get your thoughts on some things here. Sounds great. Cool. Um, to kind of just kind of kick everything off, dig into it. Uh, first of all, I'm sure everybody knows this, but B to B is uh, business to business. B to C is business to consumer. Uh, and uh, just want to kind of kick things off, John, and just tell me what you think about using Facebook uh, as a good platform for B2B marketing. What are your just general overall thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I get the question a lot. I mean, is, is B2B, does B2B work on Facebook? Should we even try on Facebook and this and that? And I mean, the truth is, I don't really differentiate between the two because ultimately it still comes down to targeting and creating the best content for the right audience and you know, and just being smart about the way about the way you create your campaigns. I mean, clearly, yes. When B to C, you get um, a much larger audience potentially than you will have with B to B. Because B to B, you're looking more often at decision makers. Um, but either way, you're still creating content for people or creating products for people um, that should have interest in your solution. So, the the again, the primary thing is let's just make sure that we're reaching the right audience. So whether it's creating a Facebook page and and building that audience there or it's creating articles, blogs, whatever, um, that appeals to that to that audience, um, we just got to make sure that we bring in the right people to start as opposed to focusing so much on, you know, how many page likes do we have or how many, you know, clicks and likes and all that kind of stuff we've got. Just making sure that it's quality and it's the right people to start with. Yeah, and I think, you know, some pe people sometimes forget that uh, a CEO, a president, you know, there's people behind those titles, <laughs> all right? Yeah, and, right. And they're not just, you know, big businesses necessarily. They're, they're, they're actual people. And, uh, you know, and those kind of targeting options you have on, you know, on Facebook allow you to get in front of those people. And I think that that – it's just one of those just weird things you, you kind of forget that's, you know, kind of logical, but it, it is right. something that, that people forget. Right, and so when you create content to start, just make sure that you're creating that content with that audience in mind. So if your your audience is typically a CEO, CFO, CEO, you know, uh, decision maker, whatever, don't create, um, you know, clickbait content that a bunch of other people are going to like, too, just because you're trying to get the clicks. you got to create content that's really only going to appeal to that top group, whatever that is. And so, I mean, that, that helps in a lot of ways. First of all, when you start building this audience on, on Facebook, sure, you might not get a ton of people reading, but it's going to be the right people. But not only that, you're going to start be, being able to use remarketing. So when we're building that Facebook audience, when we're promoting blog posts, when we're, when we're promoting – you know, the latest opt-in or the latest product, we're going to be targeting people who have visited the site before. And if we're creating content the right way, where it really only appeals to that your target audience, you're going to be reaching the right group of people. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. And we'll, we'll dig into that here in, in a bit as well as far as this targeting goes. Um, to kind of just um, move on, what are some, you know, overall inherent differences in using Facebook for B2B versus B2C marketing or 
or if if any is, is there any kind of different methodology or different way to think about stuff yeah i mean really it's a i, I mean for me it's like i i come from kind of a, a mix between those two worlds but it it, it really is i mean usually with the b2c i mean you're talking um a larger potential audience because you've got lots and lots of consumers it doesn't doesn't quite matter, you know, their background and whatnot. Uh, in a lot of cases, it's kind of dependent. Whereas B to C is, is typically a, a much smaller, refined group of, of decision makers. So it's it's tougher to make a huge splash, say, um, like creating viral content in a in a, a B to B type of environment. Um, and then really, your targeting is going to be different to start. So when you're going after the decision makers, you're going to be targeting people by job title, or it could be by the company they work for, or it could be you know how much money they make and, and things like that, as opposed to um, you know a lot of the B to C you could simply be looking at oh I you know I want to go after um, men and women age 25 to 34 uh, who live in the U.S. and it could be really basic whatever. Whereas you know um, B to B it can be much more refined. Gotcha. And, um, you know, it kind of leads on to kind of what I wanted to get into are, are the targeting. You know, we have lots of options like targeting, job titles, geography, employers. Um, I just want to know, like, how accurate are these targeting options as well as any of the ideas for creating the most powerful and effective audiences? You kind of touched on a couple things, but if you really wanted to zero in, are, are there any things that, you know, people should keep in mind? Yeah, I mean, first of all, when you're doing this initial targeting, it really should be top of the funnel stuff. So it's not, okay, this is my finished product, this $1,000 product or whatever it is, and I'm going to target people based on um, on the job title. The, here's the issue with Facebook being around for so long, <laughs> is that if they're targeting based on job title, those job titles, you know, it, it, the accuracy of that depends upon people act, uh, updating that information. Mm -hmm. And um, so if they're not, then you're not going to get accurate information for targeting. But that's also why, you know, I think it's really important that we, we when, when we are using that information, we're doing it for the top of the funnel. So we and, and something that's a high-volume action, something that's easy as opposed to I'm going to target all those people, not sure how accurate that information is, trying to sell stuff. So there could be a lot of waste in here as opposed to I got this video that's going to appeal to, to my target audience um, where I know I can get a lot of views at an inexpensive price so I can create an audience off of that. So anyone who watches this video is somebody who's in my, my target demographic. So by watching that video, I can remarket to those people and not waste my money on, on the rest that may not be accurate down the road. So, gotcha. So I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. So, yeah. It, like the, the job, whether it's job titles or interests or behaviors, I mean, I I certainly question the accuracy of all these things. Um, and actually, I wrote a, a blog post recently just about how Facebook will show you how uh, you're being targeted um, in interests. And I found that a lot of it's very accurate, a lot of it's very inaccurate. So we need to look at that as just the first step. We need to bring them into our audience. We need to filter out the bad stuff. So then, you know, uh, with with high volume actions like watching videos and reading blog posts before we send them into basically our Facebook funnel. Gotcha. So now, in, in regards to interests, you know, on, on in a B two B world, what 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 are some interests you know we should keep top of mind? Obviously, there's plethora or almost an infinite amount of different industries out there, but yeah, are there any pointers you can give in regards to that for the B2B world? I think that's always going to be dependent upon what your product is and who your target audience is. I mean, just just because it's B2B doesn't mean we're all going to have the same type of interest. Gotcha. So, um, it really yeah, depends I mean, on, the, on the industry. What about behaviors? Yeah, I mean, so that's, that's really where we need to start getting into um, education and, and career and job titles and things that you bought, things that, things that you – so you can actually go on the history of what people are, are, are buying. And that's mm -hmm. so you can target people who buy business-related products or whatever it is that, that may be related, related to your brand. 
Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good point and something that people should pay, uh, you know, a little bit extra special attention to where you can really start to define your audience if you're able to know them that, you know, well enough. You know, if there's a certain book that somebody reads um, that you have found converts for your type of business or, you know, different, you know, if they buy this, then, then that. So I think that that might really, you know, be a very nice way to, you know, in addition to job titles and, and you know, and all that they might change. Um, you know, if somebody was a vice president, then they're most likely somewhere doing a pretty decent job somewhere, right? Um, yeah. at, at some point. So, okay, that, that's cool. Now, how do you filter out BS titles like CEO right. of making money? And that's a real one. <laughs> We've seen that. Uh, yeah. So we're, you know, how, how do you filter out the, that crap? Well, I think that's precisely why we're, we're using this as, as the top of the funnel. So okay. we, let's, we create a video, for example, that is probably boring to most people, but it's going to be interesting to our target audience. And so when we um, and so we're still targeting at this point because we don't have a, a good built-in audience. We're targeting based on interests and behaviors and job titles, whatever. Um, someone who says they're CEO of making money is probably going to ignore that video because they're not truly interested in whatever, you know, they're not truly a CEO. I don't know, maybe the name of the company is making money. But um, so, so the thought is the top, you know, 5% or whatever it is that watches this video for, we'll say, 30 seconds or whatever the amount of time we, we determine um, is going to be added to an audience because that's, that's essentially a sign to us that not only were they in that original audience that we thought may be relevant, but they paid attention to something that, that we think is relevant to them. So that, that gives us a good, good sign that they should be somebody we're spending money on, not somebody with a BS title. So that's the way gotcha. I would approach it. But gotcha. really, so long term, in long term, in all these situations, you don't want to to rely entirely on things like interests and lookalikes and behaviors, um, just because it, like they're not that accurate. So we, we use it as a first step. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's not a, it's not just a one-two punch. It's obviously more than that. But in general, what really what you're getting at is yeah, there's some great targeting. But you use that as just basically the first, you know, cookie you send out there, and uh, you know, let them take a bite of that, and then you start building up more refined audiences where then you could, you know, remarket to them other content. But then you start to think about start serving your buying ads over time to those all that secondary audience that you built through the initial targeting. That's basically kind of what what you what you're really getting at. I mean, what you have been right. getting at. Yeah, and, and I, I'd even take it a step further that you can make this pretty complex and turn it into what I like to call an evergreen campaign. So you've got one or two actions that trigger it. So basically if someone triggers this action that, that proves to you that, that they're interested in, in, in your industry and they're, they're someone who should be your target audience. So it could be that they watched this video or it could be that they opted in for something on your site. And then, uh, you know, the, the beauty of remarketing, um, we can create audiences based on someone who performed that action within the last three, four, five, six days, whatever we want to say. So we show them one ad for those first few days, show them another ad for the next four days, another ad for the next four days. So, so basically we're, we're bringing them down the funnel just because they performed that one action. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and so we could, we could be working up slowly. It could be, again, another informational video, another um, helpful blog post that solves their problems to start. Eventually we start getting into, you know, opt-ins and registrations, and then we got product and the benefits of a product. And if they haven't, you know, reached out to, because, you know, obviously it would be to be too. We're not necessarily looking at, you know, quit giving you a credit card and making the purchase right away. It could be a relationship where you've got to have a conversation. But if that, final action hasn't happened yet after a certain number of days, they fall out of that funnel and you stop wasting your money on them. So and that, that's kind of the way I'd approach. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. And it, and it kind of sounds like, I mean, obviously it's, you know, marketing is about getting the right information in front of the right people. But it sounds like when you're using B2B for Facebook to kind of maybe err on the larger audience at first, you know, maybe open it up a little bit more with the thought that you're really looking for that, um, the interactions um, to start 
narrowing that down versus, you know, trying to really, really, really zero in from the very beginning. Is Would that be a decent strategy to kind of undertake? Well, I mean, I think both would be fine to experiment with and see what works. But the main point is when it's not accurate, 100% accurate, um, you're kind of putting all your eggs in one basket that may not work when you start zeroing in too much. Um, so now if you, if you come to the table with a bunch of website traffic, then none of this even matters. We yeah. just target our website visitors or if yeah. you have a big email list or, or whatever it is. But but basically what we're trying to do in the early going is find our audience. And now if we, if we start broad, we're probably going to be very uh, – get, get, get a lot of people ignoring us in the early going. So we create ads, content, whatever that's not appealing to that audience in general. But the, the key is that it appeals to some people. And uh -huh. kind of zeroing in on who it is uh, appealing to so over time we can start – um, limiting that audience a little bit more and more. Gotcha. Now, you, you did talk, uh, you know, about uh, creative practice for uh, using evergreen campaigns where, you know, once they click on it, you have it set up where they get served a second, a third, fourth, you know. Add, are, are there any other creative practices to apply when marketing to this B2B world when, when you, you know, once you've narrowed down your audience and decided on everything? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many different things we can do, but I I think I, absolutely that when whether it's evergreen, um, and the types of uh, ads that we create, I and mean, a lot of it can apply to obviously both B two B B two C, but I mean I think video is certainly a great tool. So whether it be live videos, you know Q and A's, that kind of thing to interact with your audience in different ways. Um, also the the lead ads. So when we talk about creative practice and, and kind of process here. Um, we've, Facebook's generated now custom audiences out of interaction with lead ads. So mm -hmm. if you show them, a, show them a, a, an ad for some sort of registration or, you know, reach out, you know, set up, set up a consultation with one of our people or whatever, they open that form. You can create an audience out of people who just open the form generally an audience of people who open and submitted or open and didn't submit. So then you can create different uh, ads depending on what they did with that, that lead ad form. Mm -hmm. um, and absolutely, just, just a little bit of everything, but carousel ads, um, basically giving people options with a carousel. So um, it's not just this one product or just this one um, article, but, you know, multiple options uh, to – to uh, find what what is best for you, um, and uh, the canvas canvas ads now I think are definitely interesting as well, and it could work for the B two B, and that uh, you're giving people an interactive experience. So it's kind of like if you walk on a a sales floor and start with an intro and kind of take you down that conversation. So it's not just based on one video. It's not just based on one link or or one call to action button, you've got this whole experience you've built within um, a, a Facebook Canvas ad. Okay, okay, yeah, you gave people a lot to chew on. And, and, and to, um for the audience out there, you're not going to find Evergreen campaign as something that Facebook <laughs> offers. That's something that uh, John invented or came up with this methodology. So if you want to learn about Evergreen ads, just type in, in Google Evergreen ads, John Loomer, and you should get the information you need to kind of see what he talks about as far as setting that up. Is, is that correct, John? You bet. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it's not it's not necessarily a Facebook thing, but um, it's it's right, a great right. practice for it. Now you mentioned lead ads. Uh, that, that's interesting what you what you touched on on that. Uh, lead lead ads are definitely more of a conversion tactic. But so you would you you know you would kind of move those in behind the top of the funnel. You know, good content, you know, information type of stuff. Uh, but it, that's interesting what you mentioned that now you don't. The lead ads don't just serve the purpose of the lead or the conversion for email sign-up or form submission for a sales call or anything like that. I mean, only that. But it's in addition to that, just by clicking on it, now you can start creating audiences for those, huh? That, right. That, that's I mean, interesting. It's a big development because one of my concerns about lead ads when they came out, I mean, anyone who's not familiar with them, it, it basically replaces sending people to, your, to a landing page on your website. And 
Um, when you send someone to a landing page on your website, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. First of all, how long is it going to take to load? And on average, it takes eight seconds, especially on mobile. And is it mobile responsive? Um, when they have to enter in their information, is it too much work, especially from a mobile device? Where you're like, especially B2B, I think, you're going to be asking for a first name, last name, email address, phone number. You might, like, how much, you know, the per, uh, what the budgets are, things like that. Where it's like, I don't want to enter all that stuff in my phone. So, um, but the, the, and then what a lead ad is, just automatically opens up a form in Facebook. So never going to your website where you can customize what's in that form. And a lot of that information is going to be automatically pulled from the profile. So especially first name, last name, email address, phone number, that kind of stuff. You can also ask custom questions as well. But you're basically simplifying this process, making it much, much easier for people to complete the form. So then one of the negatives then of not sending someone to your landing page on your site is that you have no insight into how people performed or how people engaged that form. So with the, when sending them to a website, you can say, okay, now I've created an audience of everybody who clicked that ad and went to my landing page. I've got an audience of people who went to my landing page and converted. I've got the audience of people who went to the landing page and didn't convert. So then you can um, start treating those three audiences differently depending on what they did. So with the lead ad form, you have no idea what they did because that was all within Facebook. But now Facebook's created these lead ad engagement custom audiences so you can create each of those three different audiences, even though they never came to your site. You can immediately exclude anyone who already submitted the form. You can target those who opened but didn't submit, trying to give them another benefit or, you know, something else just to kind of bring them in. So it, it's certainly a helpful new addition. That is a very helpful new addition because all those, you know, the what you mentioned about some of the options what you get to do when you actually send somebody to your website, those are all big deals. Um, oh, yeah. And you didn't have that with lead ads. So that, that, that is, you know, obviously a, a huge addition for, for lead ads because we, we actually did a podcast on, on this. If, you know, I'm sure you remember where we talked a ton about it. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and that didn't exist at the time. So, that, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very nice development. So we definitely encourage and, – and as John always says, um, there's not – you know, and, and credit to him for not acting like he has every single answer all the time is you got to test. you got to try. Mm -hmm. Try doing some lead ads, try sending people to the landing page, and just start tracking and seeing, you know, how, how quality are the ones, the ads coming from the lead ads, uh, because that, that obviously would be a con, you know, you for, for, uh, for lead ads. It could possibly, possibly be lower quality ads, but you don't know until you know. So uh, always track, always test, try them out, and, and see what happens. Um, and, and John's always preaching that, and, uh, you know, we definitely appreciate that, and it's great advice. Um, all right, cool. Uh, kind of just moving on here, um, are there any differences or strategies when working with smaller target audiences? Like, uh, you know, in other words, you know, only wanting to go after, you know, C-suite people in a specific industry in a very small geographic area. Uh, would there be any any differences or strata, you know, when, when you know from some of the ideas and stuff we've talked about that one might need to need to consider? Yeah, I mean, well, the the main thing is that you've got to, to budget and bid differently. Um, so if you're going after an audience of five thousand people, you can't go after it thinking I'm going to be spending fifty dollars a day. Um, I mean, this is you're, you're really you're looking more at the single digits of one, two, three dollars a day targeting this small audience. Um, also, make sure that it's not just a small audience; it's a very relevant audience. So um, that's why I'm kind of a little hesitant there. I mean, if, if we're going to narrow that audience, make sure that it's, it's, we're narrowing it for the right reasons, and to, that it's actually going to be more effective. Um, and if it is, if it's, and I, like I'll use. Website testimonies is an example where we know that someone performed a certain action on our site was is extremely relevant, and maybe we only have 500 of those people a day or 1,000 of those people a day, um, and we want to treat them all equally. So if that happens where you've got an audience that small that um, you want to treat equally, you want to reach 100% of them, not have Facebook optimized, because that's the thing that's happening. You're targeting an audience of 5,000 people or 1,000 people or whatever it is, by default, Facebook's still going to optimize and show it only to 
a certain number of people within that audience who think is most likely to reform the action that you want. So now you're talking about not an audience of 1,000 people, but an audience of a couple hundred people because Facebook's just zeroing in on, on those few people for optimization purposes. But if you decide they're all equal and it's something to experiment with, then you can start looking at things like, you know, removing Facebook's optimization and just doing CPM bidding or just doing daily unique reach bidding. So then if they don't optimize, they just show it to everybody within that audience. All right, John, we, um, you know, have a, a fear of oversaturating some of these smaller audiences, you know, especially sometimes website traffic when you don't have a ton of it or any audiences that you've zeroed in on and showing our ad over and over to the same people, even up to like 12 times, 12 times a day. And was just curious, um, you know, what, how we can, you know, avoid going from, you know, really smart retargeting marketing to, to becoming an annoyance. Uh, do you have any, yeah. any advice on how to avoid that? Yeah, there are a few things actually we can do. I mean, first of all, we can take that um, evergreen campaign approach. So um, if, if they don't perform a certain action within a specified number of days, they fall out of your campaign and they'll stop seeing it. Uh, that's the first thing. The second is um, the type of bidding you use. So um, prime example of when I use daily unique reach bidding is when I'm trying to reach 100% of the audience or as close to 100% as I can, but I'm really careful I don't want to annoy these people with high frequency. Because uh -huh. basically if you, if you tell Facebook, okay, we've got this audience of 500 people, um, I want to reach all of them, it's really hard to, to just reach all of them, uh, especially if you, if you use CPM bidding, and not just flood them. So uh -huh. you got you got a bid high, you've got to have you know, a reasonable enough uh, budget to reach them all, and all of a sudden reaching them four times, four times of the day. Uh, but if you use daily unique reach, what, what that does is you're going to reach as many of those people um, within that audience, but no more than once a day. So it caps it. Oh, okay. And, and so, so I use that a lot within my evergreen campaigns where I'm trying to reach as many of those people as possible, but I'm really careful not to just bombard them with ads. Um, so that allows me to be aggressive with my bidding and aggressive with my budget. But know that, like, if I bid – or if I, if I put like a $50 a day budget on it, it's not going to spend $50 a day in, in um, impressions because uh, it's going it, to, let's, let's say it's 500 people. The most it can do is 500 impressions in a day because no more than once per person. So um, that's one way to go about it. And the other is, you know, it's a little bit more advanced and it's for typically higher budgets, but you can use reach and, frequen <laughs> reach and frequency bidding. Uh, in Power Editor, when you choose your, when you create your campaign, um, choose your buying type. So that allows you to cap frequency. How many times do you want to reach people over a given seven day, fourteen day, thirty day period, whatever? But you yeah, took, you took the question out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. you, you took that was exactly mm -hmm. what I was going to ask you. Can you do it more than just a daily unique thing? You can do it over like a week's period. What's that called again? It's uh, re reach and frequency bidding. Reach and frequency so, bidding. Okay. So when you cre when you create your campaign, by default you're you're using the auction buying type. So no one really even real thinks about oh there's an option there. Um, and within Power Editor you have an option to select reach and frequency. Just know that once you select that you've got to be looking at you know usually several thousands in in budget um, to be able to make that work. Okay. That that that's. That's very key. I, I think people really need to go back and listen to that last minute there um, because you can go from being very smart to very annoying very easily. <laughs> it's, um, true. So, it's true. And uh, that's that's something that, um, uh, you know, I, I've definitely been talking to our team about just because I saw my same ad showing me, <laughs> you know. And I was yeah. like, hey, this isn't right, you know. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely, uh, you know, learn something there, and I ho hope everybody else does too because that's, that's amazing well, advice there. And, and Dave, I think that's, that's okay. why it's also important that you do want to show these ads to yourself. Like I hear a lot of people who say, how do I exclude myself and make sure I don't uh -uh. get these ads and wasting all this money on myself? First of all, you're not wasting money on it. Like, the amount that's being spent <laughs> showing ads to you are just, it's so low, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But also, 
like, yeah, I've, I've, I've been in the same position where I've seen it. It's like, wow, I've seen my own ad a lot lately. So yeah. maybe I need to change what's happening because otherwise you're basing it entirely off of making sure you check the metrics every so often. Um, uh-huh. so, so being in that audience helps can help a lot to, to notice some of these issues. Oh, absolutely. I want to I want to be on the other end and for email marketing and you know e blasts. So now I, I want to. I'm always hey, include me. I need to see. You know, I, I want to be in these yeah. markets. I want I want to see what actually happens on the other end of it, because theory is one thing. You know, actual practice is another. So you want to see see how everything performs. So yeah, absolutely. And you know, especially if you're optimizing for clicks, just don't click. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, small businesses with small budgets, you know, if they're just getting started, wh- where's the very first place you would tell them to start? Yeah, I mean, basically, you we need to find our audience. So the first place I send them to is Audience Insights. So it's a tool within the Ads Manager. Um, so I, we, we want to make sure, because the audience really is the primary thing that's going to de- determine whether they're successful or not. And what most small businesses will do they jump into Facebook advertising, and they make a whole bunch of guesses on their targeting. They find it doesn't work, and they're like, this this stuff is a waste of money. But in reality, we just have to make, we got to zero in on our ideal audience. So use audience insights. Um, with this tool, you can put in either, you know, your built-in audience, if you've got one that's, that's relatively large. You can put in some of the interests that you would normally be targeting in an ad. You can put in competitor names in some cases. And then it, it, Facebook will give you a whole bunch of information in terms of, you know, what the demographics are, um, age, gender, country, city, location, everything, um, the types of things that they buy, the types of pages they like, on and on and on. So, so that gives you a, a general understanding of should this audience be something I'm targeting in the first place? Does it align with what I see as my target audience? Um, and you can learn a lot along the way, too, in, in particular about what these people like, the pages they like, because they start giving you more ideas for interest targets. So that's the first place. Um, the second place would be um, using lookalike audiences. So you've got this small email list. You've got um, website traffic that's been coming in, coming in over the last six months. It's not a lot, but let's have Facebook find people who are similar to those people, automating that process instead of making guesses um, with interest and things like that. So those are two audiences, uh, types of audiences I would would start with or the audience evaluation I would start with. But again, making sure we are starting with top of the funnel ads because ultimately one of our main goals in the beginning shouldn't necessarily be let's see how much money we can make this month. It should be how, how how large can we build this audience of people that I know I can target later that will ultimately convert? So driving mm-hmm. website traffic with, with articles, blog posts that are helpful to your target demographic, creating vid- videos that are also helpful to that group, and creating audiences off of that as well. All right. Awesome. Well, I, I definitely think we gave a lot, uh, you know, gave everyone a lot to chew on and, and some great advice. Do you have any, any fi- final thoughts or ideas you'd like to throw in? Constantly changing, so uh, yeah. stay up to date. I mean, it, it's really kind of it's a pretty exciting time right now in terms of all the things that, that Facebook's doing. And um, keep trying, keep experimenting, keep doing different things because you just never know when you're gonna to find that perfect combination. There's never like this formula. Like you, you always see these ads from marketers saying the, the perfect magical formula for success with Facebook ads doesn't exist. You got to find what works best for you. Gotcha. And as far as staying up to date, that kind of leads us to our conclusion. John, why don't you let everybody know how they can continue to learn from you? Yep. Just go to johnloomer.com. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash johnloomerdigital. But I think a really good place to start, if you go to my website, again, johnloomer.com, uh, at the top there's a link for a quiz. Find out what you know and, and what you don't know. So it's a 30-question quiz. Uh, when you're done with it, and so you have to set aside 10, 15 minutes. It will tell you whether you're more on the beginner end, intermediate, or advanced. And based on those results, I'll recommend a free webinar for you. Awesome. And uh, just for people who are listening, it's J-O-N 
L O O M E R dot com. And you can also follow him at, at John Loomer. All right, John, hey, appreciate you and your time as always, as well as your insight. Um always just really, really helpful meat and potatoes type stuff here. And uh, you know, it's no fluff and, and you're really giving some people some good direction. I really appreciate you being uh gracious with your time and your intelligence. Uh well, how- go ahead. But I appreciate you, David. I was I was having fun on the show. So yeah, thanks for having me on. Awesome. We'll do it again soon. Thank you, sir. Sounds good. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.